Hey guys, I'm Janet, on occasion, and uh, today, as always, I'm being joined by the Gobbo King, and we have a special guest, which is the Law Master of Sotek. Hello. So, I guess say hello, Law Master. Yeah, he's just like, were you <laughs> going to say something else? To it. <laughs> I, I, I know most of our crowd is multiplayer, but if you are into the uh, lore and history, uh, be sure to check out Lore Master of Sotek. He, he goes into far into the realms. All of my knowledge is like 6th edition back, and uh, his knowledge is much more recent than mine. <laughs> oh, he's, he's all over the shop. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the place you, to go. Well, I mean, Warhammer, correct me if I'm wrong, Sotek, but most of it's 8th edition, right? 7th and 8th, yeah. 7th and 8th edition is considered modern. Yeah, although I think Bertoni didn't get an army book after six, so. Well, neither did the Skaven. <laughs> or, no. Bert no, uh, Skaven got seventh. Yeah, they're they right. They got seventh. Yeah. Who am I thinking? Oh, wait, no. Skaven got six, or, um, Bertonia stopped at six, and then Beastman and Skaven stopped at seventh. Yeah. yeah. And Dogs of War stopped at fifth, so it's okay. Yeah. Did they even have <laughs> a fourth? I thought, fourth? They, had a I thought they only had. Book. I thought they only had one book. Oh, they have White Dwarfs. But anyway, we're here to talk about Lizardmen. Yeah, yeah, so Lizardmen. <laughs> so that's why we brought Sotek. And, uh, <laughs> so let's get to it, shall we? So, um, yeah, yeah. Lizardmen, build guide. Gobba King's multiplayer build guide. That's what yeah. we're here for. So, um, yeah, Lizardmen. Now it's up to 130 you wanna, you pages. <laughs> I guess I'll kick us off. Um, as for the tabletop, man, let me tell you, the Lizardmen, I feel, play fairly different uh, than tabletop. Because we do have Lore Master who does a lot of that, so we can talk a little bit about how the faction actually is. Uh, you know, when Lizardman first kind of got dropped in the tabletop, they were they were kind of just a melee heavy army. They had, I think, they only had the Stegodon it was the only dinosaur they had. But Cold Blooded, for example, that was a leadership buff. That wasn't a healing buff at all. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, how would you generalize the Lizardman? Uh, well, they went through some pretty big changes um you're right in that the back in fifth edition they were primarily a melee focused force um and the stegodon was the only big stompy monster and then things got crazier from there um as far as the final edition or the modern edition being eight lizardmen uh were a pretty interesting hybrid faction um they didn't have any long range but they were it, it relied a lot on synergy so it was about synergizing your skink skirmish focus units with your light monsters being like your salamanders and your razor dons that were pretty much core to every lizardman build and then balancing that with your uh core infantry heavy troops being your saurus and then you'd augment them of course with big dinosaurs which um we have most of in the game we're missing a couple of key figures but obviously the lizardmen in total war are quite different in a number of ways um they are much more healing focused in total war than they ever were in tabletop um in okay. tabletop the only way lizardmen could heal was if there was a lore of life slot on the table and in total war now we've got this revification crystal which is totally different and new um, and then cold-blooded like you said was a leadership buff it made lizardmen um I'd say debatably the most powerful faction when it came to leadership related issues. Um, they were a very, very stubborn force and they were very hard to budge, uh, which is why they were really reliable. Um, other than that, th they do bear more similarities than some factions do, though, in my opinion, to their tabletop. They do. Uh, I, I think you're right. You do have to have a good synergy with them on the table. I don't play them that much because they are a fairly strong faction. And I don't know. I guess I play too many meme armies <laughs> to be truly competitive. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you. Now, with that cold blooded, I think we should state um, it is changing. So this is right before the patch. Mm. Cold blooded. How do I spell that? B. Yeah. Oh. So, yeah, so it's it's twice uh, as long now. Um, they, abilities, they, isn't it? Yeah. They yeah. they doubled. Yeah. They doubled how long it lasts, but the amount it heals was cut in half. So now it heals the same amount, but it takes twice as long to finish healing. Yeah, so, so they have that so debuff for longer. Yeah, that, that translates to so you're going to have that speed and melee defense on you for longer. Mm. Well, I, I agree with that. Change. Yeah, because it means you can't duck out of combat for like five seconds, heal up to full health, and run back into combat. Now you've got to stay out of combat for a bit longer if you don't want those debuffs to affect you. Which yeah, I think is and it idea. also helps. It also helps make it an ability where you're actually forced to leave combat a little more certainly than you used mm. to. 
Oh yeah. Like in the current build, honestly, there are some lords like you know, Krokar, whoever, that you can really just pop a cold blooded on while they're fighting, and it just doesn't make enough of a difference for long enough. Yeah, it, it makes Especially no if you're fighting fodder, like you just won't see the damage hit you much. He, he has so much mass, and you would just hit and then walk out of combat. So, unless you're netted or some sort of large monster is holding him in place, he's just going to walk away. Mm-hmm. So, I agree with that. I agree with that change. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's a good I can't one. Think of it. But other than that, uh, I don't think there's any other l- real big issues. I'll keep the page open just in case, but yeah. I guess we can jump right into the guide. So, uh, Janet, you want to talk a little bit about how you think the Lizardmen play? Uh, at least in Total War? Well, I mean, we haven't gone over their strengths or weaknesses yet. Oh, true, true. Yeah, I and mean, we've got to start at the top, man. So, uh, obviously, strong monsters, that's a given. Uh, strong healing, which that's a stark contrast to the tabletop. Uh, good leadership. Yeah, how's the leadership in tabletop? Amazing. Well, I think they had the best. Amazing. Oh, okay, so that, that, that at least if translates I remember, well. If I remember the rules right. They roll three dice, and you drop the low, or you drop the highest die. So you always had a better chance of making it. But now with the rampage, I actually think mm-hmm. that the Lizardmen are most are the most forgiving faction for new players because the units that rampage, you want them in melee anyways. So it's just less things for you to have to worry about. Yeah, although it does put the cavalry at a massive disadvantage because they're things yes. that you want to be microing a lot, and suddenly that's taken out of your hands. Which I guess that just means you've got less to worry about, but still, yeah. you know, Though, that can be rough. Yeah, thankfully and also weirdly, the cold ones don't have Rampage, only the horned ones do. They don't? I thought the cold ones have Rampage. I don't think they do. I thought um, they did. I, I've definitely seen them Rampage. Do they? Uh, <laughs> that, could be, getting... that could be Witch Elves, though. No, there's none of the Skinks units Rampage. Yeah, that's, uh... Oh, I'm actually in a replay right now. Okay, we'll have to... <laughs> Can't load None of this battles yet, then. That's fine. But yes, I could it, be. I could be wrong. I, I'm having uh, now. I'm not. I'm not uh, well, I'm anything. checking it, but okay. I know none of the skinks do. I mean, the skinks are kind of the hybrid. Elizabeth do suffer a kind of medium range. You know, like mm-hmm. handgunner and like wood elf glade guard range. They don't really have a good answer for that kind of medium. So if you have something like um, what am I thinking? Illyrian reaver archers. They can definitely pick at your units, and you don't really have a good answer for it. Yeah, yeah. As long as as long as they you know make sure to stay out of range of the skirmishes, then yeah, they're just yeah, gonna de- be shooting forever. Decent range, fast cav, uh, like Illyrian Ly- Reavers, or even sometimes Outriders, or mm. especially Dark Riders. Those can be oh, rough yeah. for Lizardman yeah. players. Well, I mean, Dark Riders don't have as good a range, so that helps Lizardman out a bit. But obviously, the armor piercing is going to hurt more. Like, that's the thing with Illyrian Reavers; like they can't necessarily do a lot of damage to your like more expensive units because they've got a billion armor so well you're absolutely whoever said that the uh, cold ones don't have rampage you're absolutely right only yes. the only the horn ones are listed that's and what i thought Point we must deck. have been thinking um the dark elf cold one nights have rampage. yeah yeah because they all do so i must have been mixing bizarre. in my head yeah, yeah. Lizardmen know. don't though. The cold one riders and the cold one spear riders do not have rampage because that would make them terrible. <laughs> okay. Although that does bring to one change in the um, update uh, in the latest patch. The um, uh, the hero, the scar veteran. So, yeah, the scar his, veteran on a carnosaur. His carnosaur will no longer rampage. So that's, that's awesome. That's good to know. I like that change. Um, I think that's yeah. a good one. Because, you know, oh, he, I, he should be able to control that thing. So I mean, the Scar Veteran got a lot. He's the most changed figure in the Lizardman roster. He got mm-hmm. a bunch of changes. But they also increased the hitbox. So before, Tyrannosaur used to be the best anti-large because if he fought, say, Demigriff Knights, only three or four Demigriff Knights could get on him. Yeah. And he could just murder all of them. You know, it's like a praying mantis fighting ants, but each ant comes out of one at a time. It's pretty ridiculous. Yeah. Which, it, uh, it was ridiculous, and... It, it almost played back to... Carnosaurs actually, funny enough, it relates to a tabletop story in that Carnosaurs were a really bizarre unit for a while hmm. because Games Workshop classified them as a dragon-killing monster, but they did not count as a large target. So they were able to slink behind other things because they were smaller, oh. and they also had a smaller base size. Yeah, um, So narrow, it was right? really difficult for other monsters and monstrous units to match up against them. But in 8th edition, they fixed that, and that was no longer the case. They yeah. got made, like, regular monster-sized. Can't believe oh, that yeah. giant T-Rex could hide behind a skink. That's impressive. 
We're sneaky, sneaky T-Rex. Um, oh dear. Anything else? Anything? Uh, uh, yeah. Any- so one, one other um, thing is, is talk about sort of cold blooded. Um, obviously, here you've mentioned um, the revivification crystal. Um, yeah. Unlike cold blooded, it doesn't have any debuffs, and also it brings models back from the dead. Yes, it does. Uh, which is slightly crazy. Um, so that hasn't changed at all. That is. Uh, oh, actually, it has. It has it, three it fewer three charges less. now. Yeah, but honestly, but you'll never get who, through them anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that still leaves you with what four charges per battle. Yeah. So it means you can't uh, seven. It means seven. you can't like. It's that sort of like kiting for a draw behavior, right? That's the only well, time oh, you're going to get all those charges. You know. They oh, they had ten. Now they're at seven. Yeah. yeah. That is still ridiculous. Yeah, There's so yeah. many charges. I, I don't think I've ever gotten past four in a fight. Yeah, because they take a no. while to recharge. You know. So. Well, yeah, it takes a while to recharge, and most people focus it yeah. for good reason. Yeah. I guess it's to yeah. stop it. Like, if you've destroyed all their cav and they just got infantry left, you can't just run around the map. It does take forty-five like, you seconds know, healing stuff. So. To, yeah. Yeah. I, saw, I, think I think a lot of people would just scummy behavior. Yeah, I think people just to sit back and be scummy. Yeah. So that um, stops that, which is great because it's not going to affect any like normal game because you're never going to get that far, right? So I think, that, we, I think it's a good change. I think we mentioned everything. Uh, is there any favorite units anybody wants to talk about before we talk about the matchups? Um, uh, yeah, are we, we still talking as far that. as changes are concerned, or are we just moving into? Well, we did that. We did the patch notes. Yeah, let's already. get let's get into the guide. Okay. So um, okay, I mean, obviously, Carnosaurs now um, is debatable because we don't know how. I I still think them, they're going to be good. They are still just a fantastic like anti-large unit. Yeah, um, I mean, they, the they got some they tweaks in here, but I bet they're still going to be really solid. Yeah, they... I, think, I think they're the best anti-large unit in the Lisbon. I think I think there's going to be a place for them against any like you know large there's, like monstrous. There's unit no large model they don't match. Sorry, there's no large models they don't match up well with. Yeah, so I think they're MVP. Uh, Temple they're... guys as well. Would you put them in there? You know, top units. Um, I mean, Temple, I like, like them. They're just, they're just really expensive. They are. Yeah. They are. Reliable. They are. Expensive. So it's a, it's an odd one. Uh, this, I'm just trying to think of things that are kind of off meta that people don't really think about. Feral, feral stegodons, I think, are great uh, that people don't. I use think a lot. most of the feral. Uh, I don't like the feral Carnosaur that much, but I really like the feral because Bestial of the round page. The <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the other two rampage as well, but they're really cheap. Yeah. For their value, I feel like the Feral Carnosaur. I think the problem with the Carnosaur is that when people see it, they tend to focus a lot of effort at it. Yeah. And so the Feral one can get screwed over by that. Hmm. But the Stegodon, especially, like his charge animations where he just plows through people, even if he's up against like a solid Spearman unit, he'll usually accidentally charge out of it and start yeah. hitting other people. Yeah. That's true. I, I love the Stegodons. Uh, they're amazing in every way. I think one of the most. Un- Unit still is the skin cohorts or javelins. Uh, I know it's unusual, yeah. but they have fairly decent melee stats. Well, they're the same as regular skinks in terms of yeah, their melee stats. They only got like three or four volleys, but those three or four volleys are enough to kind of like turn one, the tide. 100, 120 shots, 90 shots, or whatever it is. Yeah, well, the 120 models, and I can't remember how many volleys they have. So if it's three volleys at 120, that's you know, 360 little darts going at somebody. Yeah, yeah it that's hurts. It really hurts, especially if they're... Because usually people will see them and match up a lighter unit to go against them. And if you chuck a good volley in, it'll... it'll they, they'll do great work on War Dancers, Rat Ogres, anything with low armor. If you're fighting any low armored faction, I, I, I recommend them 100%. Oh, yeah. They're really solid. Yeah, I, I think for me personally, my MVP in most games... I'd have to say it's Chameleon Skinks. Uh, oh, that's yeah. probably my favorite unit. Chameleon Skinks and Pterodons. I really like the two of them. Mm. I usually go cheap and go with the regular Skinks. Unless I feel like, because so many people now on ladder, they just uh, won't bring range against the Lizardmen, because only a few factions is armor-piercing range. So I just try to save the extra points and get the chameleon, or the regular Skinks, because I can get three for the price that would normally be two. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I had a look at them earlier. The um, damage that their missiles do for the um, skink skirmishes, it's like half what the chameleon skinks do, but they have 90 models instead of 68, and they're 200 quid cheaper. So instead of two units of chameleons, you can bring three units. Yeah, I, skink I have not done any testing. So. I don't know if three skink uh, spitball throwers is better than two chameleon skink spitball throwers. Oh, yeah. Uh, see, I'm not entirely sure, but I think the advantage of having more units is better because if cavalry does get near them, you can run them all off in different directions. 
Yeah, and they're so the I think they're just the advantage of having more of them is great. Uh, I guess that's it for units. Uh, we want to talk about the Lisbon matchup or Lisbon versus Beastman. Um, I mean, I think we're going to have to, right? Yeah. Well, uh, Celtic <laughs> is the special guest. What would you like to say about it? Uh, for against Beastman. Against Beastman. Uh, honestly, um, despite the fact sometimes I take it as a joke build, I really like taking my skink heavy build against Beastman. Oh. Um, that being said, uh, the, the thing about Beastman for me is that most of their infantry doesn't scare me because I find that uh, I like to take Croxagors. I really like Croxagors. And Croxagors actually match up extremely well against Beastman. Um, because the only real anti-large they have are Minotaurs with great axes and they, they, yeah, uh, they'll cut right through. On horse. Oh, yeah. And Minotaurs are kind of rare right now due to a myriad of reasons. Um, I, I and find it, that odd though in that matchup because they are probably, like, Lisbon is probably the best faction to bring Minotaurs against. Th that's true, but they tend to have a problem right now where I, I, I think it's an issue with their mass where, like, I don't know if you've ever tried to charge a dinosaur with a unit of Minotaurs, but Minotaurs go flying in all directions. Uh, I mean, some of them do. Some of them don't. But um, The ones I don't that don't see will them. wreck a dinosaur. Yeah, I don't see them terribly much, really? honestly, against my lizards. And even when I do, if you've got, like, you know, my typical two chameleon skinks, um, and then, like, a slon or a carnosaur, like, focusing down that one unit of Minotaurs really quickly... Because when I play against Beeson, right now I've been seeing a lot of Synagors with great weapons. Like, people will take them and throwing axes. Oh, yeah. But if you have Chameleon Skinks, um, you can trade pretty well with them. Or what I really like to do against the throwing axe units is I'll just take a unit with shields like Skink Cohort or Temple Guard or whatever, and I'll just literally throw them right in front of those throwing axes to oh, just yeah. try and eat all their ammo. I disagree with the Synagors with great weapons uh, in that matchup. I understand why people take Warhounds and Synthagores because they can run down Skinks. Like, Skinks do amazing in this matchup because I'm, I'm just looking at the Beastman roster right now. Gore Herds, 15 armor. Uh, Synthagores, 35 armor. What is it? Minotaurs, 35 armor. It's, uh, you know, excuse me, across the board, they just have such low armor that even these Skinks, any, any Skink with a ranged unit is going to do a lot of damage. Oh, I don't think it's great. I would, if I were playing Beastmen, I would always take at least one unit of Minotaur's great weapons. It's just yeah. lately that's all I've been seeing on ladder and in tournaments is people just spamming Senegors, thinking that'll save the day. And and see, I like, I like it's a bit of both. easy. I like, it's I like easy to go, for Lizardmen um, to just slap them. But with with Beastmen, I tend to go like fairly wide, keep all the infantry wrapped up, and then I have Minotaurs and Senegors. So I tend to get. Like surround the back line with a load of centigors, and then the skirmishers are too busy to, you know, focus down your minotaurs. Then your minotaurs can just kill a dinosaur, and then I think one. all the all the so, answers to the problem is the same though. Uh, as a Lisbon player, you can get away with javelins, mm -hmm. skinks, commercials, or chameleon skinks. And something I didn't know, I learned this from someone else. Um, ancient stegodons actually do fairly well. Oh yeah, uh, I I did not know that. I watched a tournament replay. And uh, he had like two ancient stegodons, and because they get eight shots off, uh, the minotaurs are great weapons, and like the centigors that you went close to them just got shot to pieces. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that working well actually. Yeah, the giant blowpipes do a lot of damage very yeah. quickly. Yeah, those and they can great. shoot while moving too, so they're they like can nasty shoot on while the fighting. Is amazing. Yep, yep, they're very scary. Yeah, um, that is one nice thing. The Lisbon have a lot of terror and. She, all right, a lot of terror options. Oh yeah, to throw at the beastmen. Yeah, yeah that's beastmen true. are a scary faction to go up against. With Honestly, the beastmen, the scariest, like their front line, will probably win because a lot of a lot of beastmen players are going to bring a pretty heavy set of like bestigors, and that hundred armor and high armor piercing, like they're they'll cut through. I think they'll cut through anything in the infantry line. Yeah. Uh, in an infantry matchup, yeah. Yeah, and maybe the Croxagors would be a good pick. I'm not sure how exactly they would do against Croxagors. I, I find Croxagors trade well just because Bestigors don't match up against them super great because the yeah. Croxagors do that really nice, beefy AoE anti-infantry armor piercing damage. And as long as you have the Skinks or the Blowpipes on to keep the throwing axes away from your Croxagors, you should be fine. 
Yeah, and I take a lot of Slawn, and the lores of magic you have available, like Heavens and Light, can really mess with beasts. Especially Heavens. The lore of Heavens is awesome against Beastmen. Those debuffs, oh, yeah. like Curse of the Midnight Wind, can really shit on a Beastman line. Uh, yeah, well, you reduce their armor to zero, so everything goes through. Yeah, well, except Bestigals, and... but then, you know, getting rid of yeah, some you're... of their armor is great, so. It drops and their Chris... melee attack as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, so I'm, I'm pulling it up now. Is formidable. It's minus 26 melee attack, so a Beastman already have kind of a. They're a very charge heavy faction, mm. uh, so they do a lot of their initial damage, like in the first kind of. 20 seconds or so of combat. Oh, yeah. Depen so you take that away from them, and they go from 36 to... What, what did I say it was? 26? Production? Yeah, so they go down to a 10 melee attack, and they're trying to hit your source warriors. It'd just be whiffing. Mm. Yeah, Although, but of um, course, there is always nice. the, croc the Crocar take, and Crocar, I'm sure, is something Beastman really struggled to put down. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I've been able to do a lot versus him, uh, but that's because as the be when I play Beastman, I like to go lower shadows. And as soon as Crocar runs through the line, you do an enfeebling foe. So you reduce his stats, and then you swarm with your Gorbul or your Minotaurs, whatever your anti large is. Oh, yeah. But that's the and thing. That like, reduce... Even then, he's got such huge mass, he can escape before you can capitalize on enfeebling foe a lot of the time. Yeah, he's, he's I mean, you got to be smart about it. I, I usually have some hounds, poison hounds, to kind of keep him in place. Yeah, that really helps, actually. Um, so I, I think as the Lizardman player, so long as you kind of fight along your front line, you're pretty safe. Hmm. Um, the Minotaur is like, as they charge through you, they'll get stuck on your large monsters. Yeah. Um, anything else? Um, yeah, I think the key against against Beastmen for Lizardmen is to make sure your characters don't get isolated because that's when Beastmen get... Or your dinosaurs and characters don't get isolated because that's when... Beastmen I think that's going to be a running theme for us. <laughs> Although, uh, a nice other thing um, was good against Beastmen. I quite like Pterodons as well. Because yes. having those ranged attacks, dropping the rocks, like suddenly they get so many leadership debuffs from, like, you know, being under missile fire, being under yeah, artillery Irish fire. Irish and... perform really well against Beastmen. Yeah. yeah they yeah. have a lot of armor. Mm -hmm. They do a if lot you of get damage them to blob well. up. So, yeah, they can really help. But, like, Harpies will do really well against them, actually. Harpies are great. Yeah, tear them to shreds. Them. Yeah, it's pretty Harpies rough. can actually easily a uh, unit of harpies can easily kill a skink chief on a pterodon as well. Yeah, yeah. So you got to watch out. Uh, for that, if they know. catch him, I think the, he is faster. Let's check here. Harpies are fairly slow. Uh, yeah. Skinks are ninety speed. Harpies are I think they're eighty. They're eighty two. Yeah, but that'll keep them from focusing on your characters. I mean, that's what sure. someone did to me um, in a tournament like a week ago, and I could not shake those stupid harpies off. Oh yeah. There's like three units of them, and I just the, the harpies are very hard for lizardmen to kill because you don't have a lot of long range shooting. Yeah. So you have to be constantly chasing them to keep up with them with your like chameleons or skinks or whatever. Mm -hmm. To and they you know they're all spread out, so it's it's very difficult to yeah. wipe them out. Well, I mean, what happens is basically you've got to run around in a circle, but then they're going to run around in a smaller circle because they're chasing you. So that speed differential suddenly is sort of limited because you can't shoot at them for a long distance. So they can really cause you a lot of problems. So um, should, uh, we, yeah. should we go to the should we go to the build? Because yeah, we go to the build. Um, you know, like all like all builds, these are just suggestions that get you to learn the faction. Uh, you know, don't don't take it as just don't copy paste. You know, just learn your own kind of style. Uh, this particular build, I threw I kind of threw it together. I haven't played this matchup in a while. Uh, you have Crocs, you have Crocar and the Carnosaur to kind of deal with anti-large. I know the Feral will rampage, but as long as you keep it, uh, the fight like on your spears, you should be fine. Uh, you have the Skink Chief flying with two Pterodon Riders, and they should be harassing. Their top target should be Centaurs with throwing axes, uh, followed by anything else with low armor. The Skink Priest, which is a flock of doom, just kind of a little bomb, has his ancient Stegodon, and that, I mean it's kind of simple, just to help people learn. Uh, what do you think for a starter army for people? I think you've definitely got the tools in there. Um, I probably, I mean, I I love Flock of Doom, but I think uh, I think in this one it might be better to have um, uh, Heavens, just so you've got um, Wind Blast. So if you overcast it, you can deal with the Bestigals really easily, who are going to shred your front line. Um, yeah. If, but also you've got Curse you the Midnight Wind, which just works yeah. so well, especially if you've got a really like narrow line like you do with this army you basically hit the entire engagement with you know curse the midnight wind so i think that could really yeah, well if you send your if crocs if croc or someone gets swarmed by a lot of units 
that's a great moment for Wind Blast because everybody's bunched up in one spot. Yeah, so that that's one change that could happen. But like Flock of Doom, like it, it gets some great value on blobs of uh, of beastmen. So I mean, it's pretty solid. And like with Wild Heart, it means that you get to cast it a lot because it is pretty cheap. Yeah. So just getting that bonus to your like reserves and recharge rate every time you cast it means you can cast it again very quickly. So um, I do like that. And I, I mean, if you went with Zotek, you could see you have fifteen three thousand. 3050 to play with. You could probably go like two Croxagores, that's 2000, and three Skink Horts at 3000. So you could probably do the same thing uh, and have a front line like that. Some Skink Cohorts with some Croxagores to back up. That'd probably do okay. Yeah, I think that'd be quite good as well because uh, the Croxagores, although they're not going to do great against like Minor Tools or Great yeah. Weapons or anything, they're going to slow them down. You know, they're going to get in the way of big units that might be trying to hunt your big dinos. So your big dinos can get more value out of them, which is pretty good. So um, anything else, Sotek? Uh, no, that sounds pretty good so far. Uh, I guess we're hopping over to Beastman. Beastman, or uh, Beastman, Bretonia. Bretonia is pretty small. Uh, my opinion, until the patch comes out and we actually get to play with the changes to Bretonia, Bretonia just doesn't have any good answers. Like, yeah, they got you bring a bunch of carnosaurs, they can't stop it. Like, they have nothing that can stop a carnosaur. Thank God they've got a lot of big changes. <laughs> yeah, so I guess we're going to hold off here. I mean, Bretonia, from, from what I've seen in the patch notes and elsewhere, they're they're going to have to use Grail Knights, and they're going to have to try to pull you into fights against pole arms because nothing else is going to stop them. The Carnosaur is the biggest threat, and they don't have a good answer currently to them. Yeah, I mean, with the, uh, with the patch, they'll be able to bring a lot of infantry for very cheap because across the board, infantry is cheaper. Yeah, yeah and it has a lot time, more health, so, so it has more staying power as well. So it means you will have more money for your like decent like cavalry and hippogriffs and all that jazz. And, so yeah, their infantry is basically like almost a ten percent price reduction. Yeah, so it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty good. That will save you a lot of money. So you should be able to bring you know like a good amount of infantry to pin things in place. You know, bogged down. I don't imagine sort of stuff. It should it should even with the patch better. update. I oh go ahead. Sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. No, I'm, I'm I, done. Um, yeah, go ahead. Even with the patch update, I don't think uh, I don't think Bretoni has good answers. Even Temple Guard. Temple Guard are a pretty hard unit, Tony, to take down. Um, they have high armor. The infantry can't get through it. They have anti-large bows. The cavalry can't get through it. So unless they're like, um, well, really they, on top. they are a bit slow though. And the um, there is extra AP on the fire archers now, so you might be able to whittle them down that way. Uh, I almost no. wonder if it's worth almost always bringing at least one regular trebuchet just to try and shred Saurus units. And they are more they accurate now, you. supposedly. Well, well honestly, more. until the pass drops, I, I'd, rather, I'd, I'd rather skip it because yeah. Petonius is in such a bad spot that you would you have to get outplayed on such a high level for Bretonian to win that fight or outpicked. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think so. Just don't let just don't let your monsters get swarmed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we may Skip. come back to this one day. So um yeah, Dark we, Elves? Dark Elves, yeah, I need to use the restroom. Uh, Jan, if you want to take the lead. Okay. So um so obviously Dark Elves they've got a lot of like pretty cheap armor piercing. So that's always gonna be a big threat. Also they've got stuff like the Black Guard that are just really elite you know, armor-piercing anti-large units. So, they've got some pretty good tools. Also, you know, Malachith on a dragon is always terrifying. Dark Magic has that great buff um, whenever you cast a spell that gives um, a debuff to enemy armor. So that's a map-wide thing. So they just have loads of ways to deal with all the, like, heavily armored dinosaurs and uh, loads of complementary things. Um, and also Rampage, caused by Witch Elves, means that you're going to have that Rampage problem, but tenfold. So I think Dark Elves have got a lot of good answers for Lizardmen. So uh, I mean, Sotek, how do you how do you tend to approach Dark Elves? Uh, well, first of all, I will say I hate fighting Dark Elves. It's it a miserable matchup. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I think I think it is hands down the most difficult matchup for the Lizardmen mm. um, because almost always the Dark Elves are going to have either Shades or um, Dark Shards. And if you cannot get them in combat or shut them down, you will lose the game. Yes. <laughs> because they do so much incredible armor-piercing damage, which is just bonkers to me. Um, 
it, it like it always so catches me off guard. Oh yeah. Um, and then you have other problems like Black Art Corsairs trade very efficiently with most uh, Lizardman infantry. Yeah. I think the only Lizardman infantry unit that can reliably whack them is Temple Guard, but. Temple Guard then don't trade well against Executioners and Harganeth Executioners. I, I don't think you're going to see a lot of execu uh, Executioners in this matchup. So you might see some Black Guard. Mm. The Executioners, okay, they trade well with the, the Saurus frontline, but Executioners suffer horribly to large monsters. Yeah. yeah. I do usually see at least one Black Guard unit, um, usually two or three units of Dark Shards, and then it's usually just a big line of like Dread Spears mixed in with uh, Black Art Corsairs, and then there's usually like one or two units of Witch Elves tossed in there to try and catch something. Yeah, because of course, you know, you've got to get on those Dark Shards before they kill yeah. all your most expensive when stuff. I... So, you know, throw Witch Elves or whatever's going for them, and the Dark Shards are safe. They can just shoot whatever the Witch Elves caught, and it'll die. So yeah. When I, when I fight Dark Elves for real... Um, my typical build right now is usually the High Magic Slon, um, kitted out with Arcane on Forging, Tempest, Apotheosis, and Soul Quench. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, that's a lot of spells. It is a lot of spells, um, but the, the, the thing about it is that you're kind of crossing your fingers hoping for a Flying Lord. Because if you get a Flying Lord, then you just overcast Tempest, pop Arcane on Forging while Tempest is on cooldown, and if you have the double... And I usually bring double skink chiefs against them as well on Pterodons. Oh, yeah. And just nuke their lord as fast as you can. Yeah, um, that's always good. Because like, if it's Malekith, that is a huge expense. That's like... Yeah. That's potentially Malekith like is three and a half popular. grand. So, yeah. Now, and Tempest is getting changed. Uh, I, I got a highlight on my screen here. Is Tempest is, is no longer... It doesn't pin anymore. It reduces speed by 72. Yeah, uh, which is still pretty good. high... Um, oh, yeah. And honestly, for the Lizardmen, I honestly don't think that changes temp as much for them because when you get the Skink Chief in there with poison attacks as well, it like, might as well be pinned. It yeah. might as well be pinned. Like, they're not going to be able to get out of the area of effect. Oh, yeah. And uh, they're still going to be taking all that damage as well. So they're not going to get just, a lot done. It just yeah. means I won't be overcasting it. Yeah. The other thing I do against Dark Elves is I usually, because I like to bring the High Magic Slon, I usually bring at least, I probably bring one unit of Cold One Spear Riders to guard the Slon. And then the rest of my army will basically be a mix of uh, Skinks and Saurus. Uh, Croxagors are really fun, and I love them, but they do not do well no. against Dark Elves, because mm -hmm. there's almost always at least one Dread Spear unit. Well, even if there's... And Dark Elf Spear units... Even if there's a Dark Shard, uh, Croxagors, they, they get hit, and after one or two volleys, they rampage, and yeah. at that point, they're gone. Yeah, uh, I do like to take one unit of Pterodons with... Uh, poison javelins to help with killing the flying lord um but what i really like bringing them for is for the drop rocks on the main line once the fighting starts and then having something that can just fly right over the dark elf line and engage with the unit of dark shards oh yeah just to keep them busy um but that's why i also like to bring a bunch of skink cohorts to like i try and fit at least three and just run them along the outside and just pray i can find a way in oh yeah um, you, you can really, definitely you can definitely use a skirmishy style build against Dark, yeah. uh, dark so, Elves. Lately, I've almost been wondering if it would be better to instead focus on bringing more big dinosaurs. Like, instead of... Um, usually, I would just have the revification um, bestilled on if I was playing for keeps. But I almost wonder if it'd be worth trying to invest in at least one or maybe even two Stegodons. Just because they can push through lines, no matter how heavy they are. Yeah, so they dark get the Dark Shards nice and Yeah, Dark Elves tend to deploy... In my experience, Dark Elf players tend to deploy in kind of like a like a, a U shape, where like they have a pretty solid front line, and then they usually have something on the side that's just designed to like run up and down and block skinks from getting to the back, because they know if you can't get to those dark shards, you've lost the game. Yeah, and for me, it's usually a match of trying to figure out how fast I can get to the dark shards, because if I can shut them down, usually the dark elves can't beat me at that point. I have run the double feral stegodons. And because of their mass, you you, you kind of it it's kind of a timing push. You need to lock their front line down with the Saurus warriors, and then you charge in the stegodons. And after they kind of bulldoze their way, you just immediately give them orders after the dark shards. And I mean, it takes a little bit of management because if you see like witch elves or black guard, you got to move around. But they can do a great job 
And even if they do have black art, as long as the black art are stuck fighting in melee, they don't get their charge defense. So you can hit and then pull out through your same troops, come back around, hit, and then pull out. You can do a lot of that. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, one thing I've seen recently is um, double solar engine. Yeah. yeah. Solar engines can definitely do well. Because, yeah, I mean, they can massively outrange the dark shards. You can get some early damage in. Um, or you can just aim for, like, Blackguard or, you know, any expensive unit like that. You think it's going to be a threat. Um, for nuking their, you know, Flying Lord, if they got one, just having a couple of other things firing away at them, that's, you know, they're not going to get out of that, really, with a yeah, huge that, combination. Yeah, that style. can work. The but, only thing um, that's... It's, it's pretty pricey. Yeah, and the only thing that spooks me about that is, like, the Solar Engines are fun, but if the Dark Elf player is really efficient with his choices, you do have pretty limited ammunition with Solar Engines. Oh, yeah. Um, and if he has, like, a unit of Black Art of Nagaron and three units Lord, like, you'll run out of ammo trying to deal with everything. I think, I think in that case, focus on the Black Card. Uh, the rest of it you yeah. can deal with. Well, I mean, the thing is, though, those uh, Solar Engines, even when they run out of ammo, you can still start stomping through things. Um, they I think the still biggest be able to threat... push through stuff. So, you know, they do have uses when they run out of ammo, because they're still big, stompy dinosaurs. But, I mean, that's, that's something I've seen a fair bit, but I, I can't say it's whether it's like a great strategy or not. But well, I think the biggest, threat, the, the biggest threat to the lizard man would have to be the repeater cross, uh, dark shards of repeater crossbows. Yep. Uh, yeah. You just can't catch them. It, it, you have to have some sort of skink unit. That's why, it's, I mean, I I physically will never go into a dark elf game without two units of chameleon skinks. Oh, yeah. And the only reason Chameleons I take chameleons instead of... Javelins, pterodo- something has to keep them away. Yeah. You gotta chase them off. Because yeah. they will melt anything. Oh, yeah. Um, and you that's, can't catch that's them. An, but with their low armor, that's another nice thing that if you've got a um, Ancient Stegodon, um, those, like, crazy blowpipes will will kill a lot of them. Uh, do they have the range? Let me check. Um, I, they, think, I think the range is the about range. the same. Yeah, range they is 115 range. versus range of... Well, they're the same range. Uh, you yeah. could probably even go with just a regular Stegodon. I, I like the Javelins because the Javelins are cheap. Once they run out of ammunition, I'll just have them kind of approach the Dark Shards. And as soon as they turn around and run, I'll pull the Skinks back. And as soon as they come back in, I'll move them out. Oh, yeah. The yeah, javelins- that's, that, that's something I honestly haven't experimented too much with. That probably would be worth it against Fast Cav Heavy Armies would, is the uh, Skink Skirmishers. Or sorry, the Cohorts of Javelins. Hmm. Yeah, t- definitely try them out because they have okay melee. I'm not going to say they're great. <laughs> well, they're identical <laughs> yeah. to skinks. And the extra javelins, like it just turn off fire. If you see that they have stuff, turn off fire at will. Kind of use them to push back. You just kind of screen with them. That's all. That's their whole job in life. And yeah, it works pretty well. Uh, I guess we go to the sample build. Uh, we've already yeah. talked about stuff. Uh, this. This is just a suggested build, like I said, to kind of learn the army. Um, the Stegodon, my, my thinking in this process was the Stegodon is to help to support that front line, to give you some AP uh, to run up and down the line. It can also push through to get on Dark Shards. The spear uh, Spears can help support any fight. Uh, the Cold Ones, you can always hold them back next to Mazda Mundi if you need to. And Mazda Mundi, with, he, he has so much area effect that anywhere that you can get, that he just blobbed up his units, he just start dropping bombs. Like mm-hmm. run that Stegodon through, and if he attacks it with, you know, witch elves and black guard, hey, ruination of cities. That's a good spot. <laughs> For um, sure. Uh, any thoughts or critiques before we move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, well, uh, you no, don't I'm gonna have go... um, you don't have the shield of the gods, uh, shield of the old ones, on him. Oh, I don't. Uh, uh, well, I it's not listed. You might you might have it on, but it's not listed. Oh, I, can't that is... think of, I can't think of a reason not to take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's um... such a good ability. Oh, for sure. Because, yeah, if you just drop that, like, on, you know, sort of the main engagement, like the frontline engagement, you can use Banishment of Ruination Cities with yeah, a that's, little that's... less risk of killing your own dudes. That's the ultimate is... joy of Mazda Mundi. Cast both mm-hmm. your bounce spells and immediately follow up with the bubble. That's pretty great. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it gives a leadership buff as well. So even if you guys do take a bit of damage, they're not going to just run away. Which yep. is great. I'm going to go grab a drink real quick. Y'all keep going. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I, there's not too much else here. I, like I said, these are just to learn your play style. And I think we do mention the banishment combo somewhere up 
in the uh, beginning here. Yeah, yeah, it's in the main, like the just general Lizardman. Stuff. Yeah, I, I think I got it highlighted for everybody. Okay. So these are more about learning the stuff. And as the Monday will do a great job. Just rampaging up and down. Yeah. He'll, he'll kill every infantry I mean, he runs he's into. Got so much health um, that he's just great with the revocation crystal backing him up. Um, he's going to get a lot of work done. And yeah, Zlack is no joke. Like, he'll do a ton of damage to enemy infantry just charging through him. Yeah. Yeah, he uh, he does quite a bit. Yeah. So and as uh, long as he has cool. support, he, I mean, like I said, only the Black Guard are really the biggest threat. The Cold One Knights can be a threat, but you know, if you can if you can be smart, you got Nets of Ammon talk. Use it as you need. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Lizard versus Dwarves. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is always so slow. <laughs> is it Stego Don or Steg Uh, it's oh, Stego Don. Steg -uh. Yeah, I don't worry, I checked. <laughs> All right. Uh, Lizard versus Dwarves. Ah, it's it's weird. I I go back and forth about who I think has the advantage. Um, but yeah, like first thing you got to mention is Dwarves. If the map allows it, they're bringing cannons. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're gonna bring cannons. They're gonna fire, and they're gonna try to bring you down. Mm -hmm. So you're usually end up rushing. Yeah, uh, what definitely. Else is there? You definitely you're, gotta and, charge the dwarves. Yeah, and uh, you're not yeah gonna... speed, speed is important. Mm. Uh, the only criticism, I, this is later in my, in my list, is, um, you know, Curse of the Midnight Winds, always a, always something to think about when fighting dwarves. Just because if this, when the slayers when the slayers get onto your, your Bastilodon or whatever, uh, they're all going to be right there with no armor, and you just try to get them. <laughs> but uh, Mazda Mundi is probably the most common pick. The uh, other big threats, I would say that the Thunderers are probably the biggest threat. Uh, to the Lizardman player. Yeah, they can do a lot of sustained damage. They're pretty rough. Um, Funny enough, I really don't like any of the Slon against the Dwarves. I almost always take uh, either Krokgar or the generic... Uh, often I'll take generic uh, Old Blood oh, really? on a Karnasar. Because uh, yeah. I, I usually go on a for a Mazda Not just a cold one? Because I think you could get away with just a cold one. Yeah, I mean, you can, but I like the Carnosaur for being able to get out of a mess when I get into one against the dwarves. Yeah. Um, it helps to be able to break away very quickly and not have to worry about like pushing through my own guys. See, that's interesting, because um, I feel like you're wasting money on like an anti-large bonus there, when you could just go with Mazda Mundi, who's like, anti-infantry, I mean, anti-armor. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't like Mazda you can drop, Mundi's... I, think it's great. I, I don't like having magic... <laughs> Uh, even though Mazmundi does have a lot of defensive spells hmm. and like uh, hex spells and stuff, but um, usually uh, I've actually had a lot of success um, with the uh, Carnosaur. Um, weirdly, I I tried taking a cold one once and it didn't go good. I'll put it that way. I got I got it went bad. I could not get Crocar where I needed him to be. And I think he was on a horned one, and he was just not performing. Oh, yeah. Um, but normally against dwarves, I go really fast. Like, I'll usually have a, a fast lord, so something mounted on a Carnosaur or a cold one. And then it's like skinks, croxagors, cold one riders, and, um, you know, the probably the revification crystal is the slowest thing in my army, and I usually oh, yeah. fall behind, because I'm just running so fast. Yeah, but I mean, it can do that, there. right? It, it doesn't matter if it falls behind, that's great news. Well, yeah, I, I don't give a damn if it falls behind. <laughs> yeah. um, usually I'll just have a really big line of skink cohorts, followed up by, like, I'm talking like four units of croxagors, because croxagors perform crazy good against dwarves. Yeah, that's true. I, uh, see, I feel Croxagors end up being a bad... Uh, they're good in that they can beat them up, but I think the, the the problem they fall into is because they're so much bigger than the sources or the skinks that they can always be targeted. So they tend to go down. I actually unless... haven't had that problem because the Croxagors... Unless someone manages to make a complete front line of nothing but like Longbeards... Which, honestly, if they've invested that much... The, the problem that dwarves have had against my build, in my experience, is that they can't make their frontage large enough to block all of my skinks while simultaneously having the core of it strong enough that the Croxagors don't instantly destroy it on the charge. So basically the idea is overwhelm the front line so quickly that their back line can't get value before you get to it. 
yeah, like I if there's a unit of dwarf warriors or anything less than a long beard, Croxagors will probably kill it on the charge, especially if Skinks went in first, and they'll just punch a hole through them, and then you immediately just run into the back line. Um, the only game I've had against a dwarf player where it was actually hard for me was when the dwarf player put nine chevrons on his iron drakes. What? So, or his iron drake uh, troll torpedoes. Yeah. So I literally had to kill every single one of them to get them to break. <laughs> but even then, I had a unit of croxagors that like ran off because uh, I wasn't paying attention to one corner of the battlefield and was at full health. The entire game, I still won handedly before I even realized I was missing an entire unit. This sounds like terrible armies you've been facing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but I've I just... always bring dwarf warriors to to screen against skinks, uh, just because they're cheap. They got shields, oh, yeah. um, and and one of the problems is, is as you approach with your large models, you know cannons and thunders will will make they're such easy targets to hit that they can make pretty quick work of it. I'm not saying it's not worth it. Uh, but it's definitely something to think about. I mean, swarming the dwarves is always good if the guy's relying upon his artillery to bring down all the big monsters. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I that found. Being said, I actually started to. You know, now I think about it, I've been taking the high magic salon against dwarves. Against dwarves? Oh, yeah. Why? I take him for apotheosis, um, the buff spell, the like plus 44 melee attack spell. And uh, hand, hand of glory, H yeah, hand of glory. Uh. And then I take him for arcane on forging because I use arcane on forging on the rune lords. Mm. Oh, for the recharge, yeah, mm. that could work. Arcane on forging is pretty expensive. Um, that's true, it is, but I also really like having a free banishment. <laughs> I, I, I like having really something like a stegadon. Arcane on forging though. That's uh, that's got the is it plus like thirty seconds um, ability recharge. Debuff? Yes, plus thirty yeah, seconds. Plus 30. So that's pretty great if you're like spamming that on rune lords and stuff. Like that's gonna. Well, you can't spam it. It's sixteen wins of magic. Oof, yeah, that's actually that's pricey. Um, uh, but it the hurts whole, though. It hurts out. a lot. It. I mean, it does a lot, but it, it definitely sucks up your wins of magic. So you can. You're not going to get a lot of opportunities to get it off yeah. like, in, a, guess, in a normal match. But then maybe you say three. that I think I think with the dwarves you need to hit them really hard. Like you don't need your you're, you're going to use your winds of magic quickly. You know you're not going to be able to get a load of uses out of your spells because you need to just smash that front line, get into the back line, wrap everything up quick, or else they just like you smash that light button. Just like you smash that light button. Don't remember, guys. Smash that. Yeah, light I, don't I, I, I really think it depends like... on how you want to take the engagement. Um, you know, I like Lore Heavens. Just the curse of the Midnight Wind being Can't go wrong with Lore Farmer. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the spells, you know, they're hit and miss. It, they take some setup. Like Common Cast Door can do okay, and Chain Lightning can do okay. I mean, Harmonic um, Convergence never hurts. That's true. Yeah, Harmonic Convergence is always cheap and works well. Yeah. Oh, or should we look uh, at the sample build and we can. Uh... Yeah, well, I mean, this is it's just a suggestion to get you started. And, and as I said before, always make it your own. Um, the idea is uh, you got the three large monsters that can smash through. I, I would smash the uh, through first. And if he moves his slayers in, that's when you start dropping your, your ruination of cities and your banishment on all the slayers that get caught. Because honestly, this, the, the Stilodon is almost a throwaway. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of players do also like to take gyrocopters because really... Yeah. There's a lot of lizardmen won't bring flyers, so I'm like, if you bring one flyer, you can at least go harass the gyrocopters and keep them away from you. Oh yeah. Um, there are a lot of successful builds out there with a lot of Saurus warriors that can just kind of push through. And one thing of note, you can actually bring just regular stegodons and outshoot the dwarven artillery and just to keep healing you <laughs> your stegodons. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, approach, actually. That's true. The giant the giant bow does trade very well. Hmm. Yeah, the giant bow will will break the cannons, and if you have a revivification crystal, you just keep healing your <laughs> your giant bows, and then you engage when it's safe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's not bad. Um, but yeah, I mean, this guy, like I said, it's a, it's a little bit of a hodgepodge. You need to make the army your own. Uh, cold ones, feral cold ones aren't bad. They usually don't get too many kills, and and they're to me. They're just an excuse to keep your opponent busy on the back line. So it's either A, he chases Mazda Mundi or your Bastildon or whatever, or 
it goes after your feral cold ones. Oh, yeah. You, you have to make sure you attack at all angles at the same time. Mm. Actually, what I like uh -huh. about um, like the feral cold ones, I tend to use them like, uh, you know, in Rome with the hounds, that you basically just yes. go, you know, release, go attack that thing, and then it's anybody's guess what they're going to do. Uh, that's that's what I think of feral cold ones, because they seem to rampage instantly all the time, and then they could end up anywhere. Uh, so How do y'all feel about... Reasons. They come out of nowhere. <laughs> How do y'all feel about the... Um, I usually take two units of the regular cult ones against dwarves. The, those those are definitely worthwhile. Mm. I mean, they, they have much higher melee stats. Um, I, they're a little bit slower, but that's okay. Oh, actually, stats are a little bit they, lower. They're repaid, rampage, apparently, yeah. which we've learned. So you can cycle charge a bit more. So you can, you know... You can be, they don't repage either. You can, you can get some work done, which is nice. I think they do well. Um... Because I could be totally... I was always worried that Feral Cold Ones wouldn't be very likely to make it to the back line of the dwarves either because they'd rampage too quickly or they would just lose in combat against some of the dwarven range units. Uh, I don't think there's any dwarven range unit that can beat them in combat. Uh, but Feral Cold Ones are more of a throwaway. In my opinion, you, you, you send them out there and it's, it's to pull his resources away so your other units can get down dirty. Yeah, That's how I always saw it. Because I mean, they're the cheapest thing that moves that quickly, that will win against melee, like, will win in melee against range. Yeah, it's, I feel like I don't have so. enough micro to use a unit like that efficiently. Uh, well, that's uh, the beauty of it, they rampage, so you you just get them in once, and then you just wait. There's all, well, I mean, to get them into busy. a good enough position once. <laughs> well, I, think, <laughs> I, like I think the way you do is, too early. to improve your micro, like, if you look at this army, there's really, like, four groups. Maybe, no, there's, like, three groups to micro. You have your front line of sources and like Croxagor. That's one. And then you have your Stegodon and Bastilodon. That's two. And your Feral Cold ones are three. And the Croxagor, well, the Croxagor is with the front line. So you only have three things you really need to worry about. And you just have to, as your front line fights, you just keep just keep clicking on your different monsters and just make sure they're doing what you want. Mm. It, it means you don't get to watch the cinematics, but. Now, if you're going for like cold ones and cold, uh, cold one riders and feral cold ones and a bunch of skinks, then yes, you're gonna have you're gonna struggle a bit. To you're banging on the all. table again to drive your. No, I'm banging on my you. shin. I realized it. I stopped. Okay. <laughs> it's good. It adds peculiar. emphasis. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, I can I can see this build working. I quite like it. Um, but yeah, you you need to play some games. Uh, anything else? Um, I mean, I think that probably sums it up against dwarves, right? All right. Uh, so, Tech, would you like to talk about your experiences fighting greenskins? Uh, sure. Um, honestly, I don't. Where are greenskins? So there. Um, I don't find greenskins to be that scary when I play lizardmen. Uh, I feel like most greenskin players right now are kind of. Uh, and I think hopefully this upcoming build may repair this, but I feel like when I fight green skins, it's either going to be Azhag or Wurzag. And so yes. it's kind of a toss up on um, do I want to bother bringing the Tempest so I can just instantly destroy their Lord, which usually is game over for the green skins if they lose their Lord too early, or do I want to go something a little heavier? Uh, normally against green skins, though, I bring Mazda Mundi just because. Greenskins rely on outnumbering you, and they have very little magic resistance across their army. Oh, yeah. And Mazda Mundi could just, just he could just brutalize them <laughs> so bad. And usually they rely heavily on black orcs to try and bring down like heavy dinosaurs and stuff. Because I don't see savage orc biggins a lot. And regular biggins, you can uh, you can generally throw Saurus at them, and both units will take a lot of damage. Yeah, I think, um, I think black orcs tend to be the sort of reliable. Yeah, you know, and those biggins not. Not having immune to psych on your anti large unit is such a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. Because, uh, you know, Mazda Money just waddles in there and everybody starts breaking and running. Yeah. Oh, he's a scary dude. Well, I think, uh, I mean, the most common tactic to bring down stuff like Mazda Mundi is just the Goblin Firing Squad, which is the rusty arrow, arrows plus any any goblin or any, any ranged option. Oh, for sure. Uh, the rusty arrows just do so much damage to uh, any monster. Yeah, and it's, it's rough. If the greenskins use, um, they've got like a load of, um, what are they called? Uh, orc, ball boy biggins. 
Um, they can they can pin down your dinosaurs pretty well with them and get their yeah, range units feel, out. So if you use them defensively, I, it can be pretty tough just to run through the front line into the ranged units. Yeah, I, I do feel for the greenskins it's uphill battle, and there are some required units they need. Like I feel like you need the um, who's the regiment of renown for the orc boy orc boy boy biggest? broken tough broken tough mob. Yeah, the broken broken tough mob. Um, they I feel like you need them. You need the uh, the armor thundering archers, um, and granted, I I've played green skins against uh, lizardmen once, and that was the game where I used night shroud on my orc boy biggins uh, <laughs> regiment of renown. Really? Yeah, the broken test mob hit him with night shroud. Never saw it coming. <laughs> <That's weird. laughs> you just sneak up on their dinosaurs and start killing people, um, but. That being said, um, Lizardmen just have a ton of tools for dealing with Greenskin units. Yeah, I think and so. And Greenskins, yeah. right now, the I don't think the Arachnorok and the Giant and the Wyvern are particularly great. So a lot of people just bring a lot of stuff, but the Lizardmen are really good at dealing with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they got a lot of... Lizardmen can punish large groups of infantry very well. Yeah, very quickly. Uh, and, and the way that they work, Greenskins work, is they're going to have large groups of infantry. Uh, one thing I will mention is, like, a lot of players online tend to do this, and you shouldn't, is they put their skinks away from their center formation, and Goblin Cavalry will run them down. Yep. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, spiders, Absolutely. squig hoppers, even wolves will chase them, and they will eat them, like... I reckon, like, if you when you start the match, keep them close. Mm. When I fight greenskins with chameleons, I deploy my chameleons in my deployment zone next to my army because I'm too scared of accidentally deploying on top of a goblin unit and getting destroyed. Yeah. Well, you can deploy them right out, right in front. I, I don't. You can deploy them. Oh, right in front. I, I I keep them close at the start, and then I yeah. let them run off once I know where the enemy is. Yeah. But like goblin units are fast, and they will mess up your skink so bad if you're not careful. Yeah. But Actually, uh, um, uh, my big thing... goblins are really good for just protecting against skirmishing as well. So although there's like you know savage orc uh, biggins and stuff like that that you often see, you know for that anti large, um, they they'll get punished by skinks. So just having to cheap goblin stuff just to screen everything is pretty good for the green skins. I think. Yeah, I will say my favorite unit against green skins with lizardmen besides monster money would probably be fire leech bola pterodons. Oh yeah, those can do. Oh, they right. they can they can hurt green skins, so especially like the night goblin archer units and stuff. You can just fly over them and throw some bolos at them, and they will start panicking really quick. Yeah. I mean, if they, they start running away, quick charge, get up in the sky again. You know that rear charge and the bolas coming in, like they're gonna break if you get them in the back. If they're trying to run away from you, I think I put fire bolas in the sample build. No, no, I didn't. Uh, that's a disappointment. I should have. Um, but hey, it's just an example. So, but I, I definitely talk about it. It's right here in the last paragraph. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely right. Because as the green skins, the fastest way for them to bring down monsters is with their infantry and with their range. The boar boys can do okay, but boar boys without supportive magic struggle. Mm. Or, or uh, what's the ability? The wog. Without that, they they struggle at bringing down. They start like hitting. Yeah. Uh, but the infantry yeah. can do a lot. Well, I was thinking, I'd never rely on like orc biggins to do orc ball boy biggins to do um, like any killing. Really, they're they're just there because they have enough mass to stop the dinosaur from chasing whatever it is they're trying to kill. So it it just basically allows you the time to get your archers, you know, shooting at that target. Um, but they don't get a lot of killing done. You're right. No. Uh, so uh, should we look at the sample build then? Yeah, yeah, they can do the sample build. But now I want to get rid of it. I'm like, God. <laughs> I made it all today thinking, like, oh, I need to get stuff for Sotek. I'm like, I forgot the Fire Leash Bolas. Because, <laughs> um, you know, I was thinking, like, a little bit anti large. You got some spears and some cold one riders to help beat up Boar Boy Biggins. You got Mazda Mundi in there to curse in the Midnight Wind. You get rid of their armor, you get rid of their melee attack. Your sources will cut through. Uh, you got the solar engine to shoot up Black Orcs. Uh, and some skanks just to push off the goblins. And you can swing wide with the skanks and try to get a hold of the rest of them. And, you know, you got a skank chief. You can just shoot uh, darts at people all day. Oh, yeah. Um, but that's just chief. me. See, one thing I've noticed actually in, uh, in these builds, which um, 
I find interesting is you haven't gone heavy on heroes. And I find just with the extra um, cold-blooded, it just gives them just so much more value than like. I, I usually do. max so, out my heroes. But yeah, that's just me. yeah, I do the same generally. Um, I'll tell you what, with to, the, uh, but they just have a lot of use. No, you don't need to, but it, it's it it can help. Yeah, because I mean, with I'll the mount what, options, though. you can just bring like you know a hero mounted instead of that monster. Because uh, it's not yeah, much more that's, expensive. Yeah, that's a very usual thing I do. Like, mm. if I'm like, oh, I want to have a stick it on this build, then I'll just put a skink on a skink lore, uh, hero on a stick it on. Yeah, because you get encourage for free. You get um, like slightly better combat stats sometimes. I think, possibly. Yeah. That being uh, said, but then you get like you know a what? spell or whatever. Like it, it only costs you an extra like two hundred and fifty quid. I think like, the upcoming the changes to the monster. Star Vet, I think the Star Vet is going to be much more popular in my builds. I've always wanted to bring him, but he just never was worth the cost. He's done okay for me. Not great, but, but he's done okay. <laughs> like, his Cold One version was looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. we'll, uh, we'll have to see what he does. Um, although one uh, but yeah, green skins, I, I, you know, I always have at least two terror creatures, I think. Oh, yeah. Other yeah, than Black here. Orcs. Like, Four Boy Biggins, one of their biggest problems is, yes, they can bring down large, but they, they have fairly low leadership, and most large things cause terror, so they kind of struggle a bit. Yeah, that's true. Uh, one other thing I really like, actually, which is a bit underrated, um, I don't see often, uh, like, used, it's the, uh, what is it, the plaque of domination that the Scar Veteran can bring. Oh my gosh, yes. That um, ability can shit on green skins. <laughs> yeah, so for those who don't know, that's a minus eight leadership debuff. So if it looks like, you know, you're fighting kind of neck and neck, but leadership is, you know, starting to suffer a bit, hit that and everything in the enemy's line will get terrified. And you can use it multiple times per game. Yep. I mean, it's got a recharge yeah, and everything, but it is great just to pop that because you'll just see like a chain route will happen immediately when you do that. Um, it can be really useful against low leadership factions like green skins, I think. Um, I mean, that's it. I mean, that's a green skin matchup. They, it's, it's pretty tough. It's, it's a brave man who takes a green skin against the Lizardman. Oh, yeah. And can we just say, um, for the uh, deployment now, for some of these builds, um, Gobo's been putting in pictures of the matchup rather than trying to explain it. And I think it's rather nice. I mean, it's, you know, it's succinct, isn't it? It's just, it gives you a good idea uh, straight yeah. away. And uh, I like well, that Well, you know, you have to... So hopefully we'll be seeing more I just got that. tired of typing. <laughs> I mean that's great. I'm glad you did because I like I like visuals. Visuals are good. Um, yeah. So, yeah, uh, pictures. Yeah, so smash that like <laughs> button, guys. <laughs> uh, hi, Elves. This is a fun match. Uh, I think so, anyways. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can go. Um, I guess I'll start with this one since you guys start out. So, uh, hi, Elves. Uh, a lot of hi, Elves. It's, it's Phoenix Scars, Dragons. Like that's that's the main go-to, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, they try to dragon you down, or they dragging you down, <laughs> <laughs> um, or they use the Phoenix card. They probably have no way of keeping them stuck, right? And you can use your mass of your creatures to pull out. So as so long as you get a skink or something to tie them up, you can usually like rear charge them, or run them, or shoot them. Uh, but the dragons, the tempest, man, tempest is the way to go. Oh yeah, uh, it shuts them down so hard. Rare, rare is the high elf armor. And actually, what about you, so tech? Oh. Sorry, you cut out. I thought you'd finished talking, and then suddenly you oh, started. I'm, I'm the, done now. Your sentence. <laughs> yeah, um, I think. Go uh, ahead. Yeah, I think. I think. Um, uh, I've kind of lost my train of thought now. Um, but yeah, the dragons in the patch notes, um, they're gonna be worse against single target units generally, so, and they're more expensive. And they're more expensive, so I think I think we'll be seeing them like you know the breath attacks less like relied upon in order to take out the big monsters. I think so. It should be interesting the to see what high elves can do now. To be honest, the high elves anti large is really tied up. The only thing with anti large bonus are the phoenix guard, the spearmen, and the noble. I can't think of anything else that has anti large. Um, Lothar and sea guard technically. Oh, uh, get out of here with that trash! <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. I can't think of anything else to top of my head. Like, not even the cavalry uh, have got anti large, do they? So, no. They what about your anything. experiences, so Tech? You have any? What do the high elves tend to bring against you? Uh, there's always dragons, um, which is why I always take the high magic slot, and I very, very, very rarely lose against high elves right now. Um, uh, that being said, I do see a lot of white lion spam. 
Um, really? I, yeah. I, I, at least in the tier I play in, a lot of people take front lines of White Lions, I guess, to try and like cut through Saurus or something. Um, and well, it, actually, it, it just... they, they do sustain damage against dinosaurs fairly well. Yeah, but um, dra- I have seen a lot of Dragon Prince builds, but I, I feel like the Lizardman can read re- those builds very well. Um, the only build I have fought that I found annoying are builds that have, like, a large amount of spearmen backed with, like, two or three units of Phoenix Guard, backed with, like, a noble on some kind of mount, uh, techless, and then some, like, Lothern Sea Guard archers, um, with maybe a unit of, like, Dragon Princes or something. But, um, like, honestly, I feel more threatened by High Elves when they don't take a dragon than when they do take a dragon, because I'm always expecting a dragon. Oh, yeah. Um, but I usually, you know, show up prepared um, with the high magic slot or what have you. But um, at least for me, uh, Phoenix Guard are in this really sad position where they would be really scary, I think. But I always take a slon against high elves. And the slon, uh, like, he just waits until the Phoenix Guard get bunched up, which they always do. And then you just drop a banishment and they die. <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's definitely how I've I've dealt with them. Like, or like, and because I have the high magic slot, I always take soul quench. And if you fire soul quench in the phoenix guard, you'll just start chunking them. Oh yeah, it's it's a nasty little magic missile against units. Yeah, the this, the solar engine, the stegodon, soul quench, they all do very well with them. And, and to be fair, I don't know if there's a unit that had one v one the phoenix guard in the Lisbon roster. Like, if you just had them both fight each other. Oh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, and so you, you definitely need to think about how you're going to thin out the Phoenix card and how you're going like, to kind of whittle them down. Yeah, because I've, I just, think, I've I never think seen a high elf player protect them very well. The Phoenix card always tend to, like, hide in the back in a little block or right on the front line. They're usually not hidden behind something, in my experience. Well, unless they have, like, a Reaper Bolt or they have no, like, they're going to be advancing. They have no reason to hide in trees or something. Yeah, well, no, I don't mean like hide behind trees, but I mean like they tend to be exposed, so it's easy to shoot them with long range missiles because there's nothing in the way. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah um, and you will, you will you tend s- to see a few of those, but I think as long as you know that you like need you know to focus them down with your like solar engine and stuff like that, once they're dead, you won't have too many problems, I don't think, against the high elves because like they don't have a lot of good armor piercing really. No. Uh, one thing I noticed that high elves have a problem with is high elves, other than the master, they don't kill very quickly. Their infantry just they hold well, but they don't kill fast. So you can usually get away with just like sending like skinks or something. It just holds them in place because they don't kill as they just don't kill very quickly. So you yeah, can, it's usually what they rely really heavy on the dragons for. Yeah. Um, I will say as a Lizardman player, I have been very frustrated when a Lizardman player is smart enough to bring like a Frost Phoenix against me. Oh, it yeah. is really hard to kill that thing, and I don't want to dedicate usually the magical resources required to kill it because I'm usually focused on dragons instead. Yeah. And that Frost Phoenix can really like it. It can make the High Elf Lizardman front line exchange go from being kind of in the High Elf's favor to being stupidly in the High Elf's favor. Oh yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that's, I mean, that's the main thing. Like, yeah, mixed spears or white lions for their front, and then Phoenix Guard dragons. That's, that, I mean, that's a guarantee. And like, Tetlis is like 90% of the time. Yeah, just for that net. Just delay yeah, net and regrowth. So you can get on top of them. And yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, that's pretty standard. So you do have to watch out for that, but, you know, as long as you keep your uh, big dinos near your front line, you know, with the rest of your army. Um, but it's going to be very difficult for them to find the opportunity to like net them down and surround them with like Phoenix Guard or whatever. I think as long as you have answers to the Phoenix Guard and you have an- uh, dragons, you- you'll be fine. The rest of it's just kind of filler. Yeah, yeah, I think um, so. So uh, sample build. Yeah, did I? Uh, I think I put this one before I started putting pictures. Or yeah, <laughs> uh, my right. thoughts for this one was just you got the cold one riders to help protect the slime mage priest or sorry, uh, fight in the outskirts you have the scars uh, you have the Scar- scar veteran to help uh, tackle any dragons that land and rarely do you see reaper bolthors, you just use the solar engines to just keep popping 
I recommend Phoenix Guard unless you can manage the Panda Dragon with the Phoenix. In this in that case, change targets. Oh yeah. And the Javelins do okay. A lot of high players. I don't know why bring archers. I think they're terrible against Lizardmen. Yeah, they just have no armor pacing. They're just yeah, um, they're just a waste. The only thing I find archers good for is like putting a lot of hurt on Lizardmen infantry, but they can't deal with dinosaurs. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but those are my thoughts. Uh, you know, like I said, make it your. Uh, the banishment, if you're bringing a slot, always bring the banishment. Oh, yeah. Let your skinks or something get. Have the Phoenix Guard go play with them and just drop that banishment. Um, anything else before we move on to Skaven? Honestly, I don't think there's too much complicated stuff with this matchup. It's all, it's all just, yeah, Phoenix Guard Dragons. Deal with them, yeah. you're gold. So, yeah, GG. Now, in, in a future DLC, we could get. I don't think Shadow Warriors would make a difference in this fight, but. Uh, uh, well, I can't I mean, think it of it. If they have like armor piercing or something, I don't know. Uh, what's the what's this, the spear women? I can't think of their name. This oh, is... the um, they're not. No, there's no there's no spear women. You're thinking of the uh, the sisters of Avalorn. Yeah, that's it. They, of Avalorn. they would be scary shooting wise. Uh, well, sky cutters um... might be. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> might be good. Sky yeah, but yeah. Um, but... Right now, though, it's pretty. It's pretty one. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty one-dimensional fight. Uh, Janet, would you like to lead off uh, against Skaven? Uh, ah, Skaven. Um, so Skaven obviously got a lot of trash in their front line, but they've also got things like um, the Plague Sensor Bearers that have like crazy AP, but are very flimsy. Um, you got things like the Warp Lightning Cannon, which will get very good value if you can't shut it down quickly. Um, oh yeah. So I think I think this is the sort of game where you want to make sure you've got some like pterodon riders or something vanguarded that can get into the back line quickly. Um, I quite like the skink priest on a pterodon, so you can get in there nice and quickly with like a overcast wind blast if they've got like a ton of um, um, what are they called storm vermin with halberds just sat on their artillery, which is quite common. Um, so that's pretty nice just to mop them up quickly, and then you can just get rid of the artillery. But like I, th I think there's a lot of pretty threatening things this Gaven bring, but their front line will just be walked through. Um, and think, uh, one thing I'm though is the common pin you down too much. Like the, the big common, enemies. the common build right now of the Screaming Bell with the Plague Furnaces and Doom Wheel. They, it's it's a terrible idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah Lizardman, Lizardman can slap that across the planet. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I mean the sample build I didn't, but I usually bring. A carnosaur, because like as that plague furnace comes in, you know it just jumps on it and just eats it. Uh, I know for me, I always take Mazda Mundi against Skaven because his AOE spells are just they're just too good. Yeah, against like they're just Skaven struggle with him so much. The only way they could really kill him is with the warp lightning cannon. And the uh, poison wing globadiers, mm -hmm. but that's why I always bring at least oh, two units. Did of... I lose a uh, connection? Oh, uh -oh. You're back now. Did you? Sounds like I did. Time to no. go hop back on Discord. Do, no, do, do, you're... Do, do. what? <laughs> Gobo's malfunction. Uh, oh, uh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna just just carry on. No worry. Okay, yeah, just carry on. Just, carry, just on. carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, the most important thing when I fight Skaven is. Um, at least two units of Fire Leech Bola Pterodons. Oh, yeah. And and then um, Mazda Mundi. Because hmm. um, the Pterodons I like because they can, uh, with the drop rocks and the blasting uh, leeches, you can destroy War Machine crews and those dumb little um, Poison Wind Globadiers so fast. Oh, yeah. Like so fast, you can yeah. just spook them off. Once they spook, you just chase them. I'm kind of um, surprised that they're good against poison with globadiers because they got a fair bit of armor on them. Yeah, that's well. That's what I always use the uh, drop rocks for for oh, the really good. high armor piercing. Um, and the other thing, the thing I like about the bolas is even against a unit that has really high armor, like the poison wind globadiers, it still causes an explosion that throws them everywhere, so they're not shooting. That's very true, actually, and and that will hit their leadership as well, being like attacked yes. by those in a big way. So that's that's pretty good. So yeah, it's definitely got its uses. So I think fire bolas are just I will great say, against low armor factions and don't them charge. Do not charge pterodons into them until they are already really weak, because pterodons will lose that fight. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they can be a bit flimsy in melee, but yeah, just just 
they got a lot of utility though. Like they're good at just chasing off units and all sorts. Yeah. Um, um, usually, right now, I've started bringing two units of Spear Coleman Riders because I've been seeing a ton of Rat Ogres. Oh yeah. Um, I, but if I, you have, I was gonna say you can usually get away with um, uh, Skinks. Skinks do very well. Like Rat Ogres, I think only have thirty armor. Let me check here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the they're, javelins. They're yeah, if you bring javelins, you can prioritize them and get a lot of work done before. Yeah, I do down. like, I do like the yeah, and and the thing about the thing Skaven really suck about when fighting lizardmen is that they have some pretty scary big things, but nearly all of their big things, even the constructs like the um, plague priest and uh, gracier mount, don't have the best defense, like armor wise. Or resistance wise, oh, yeah. so skinks can just melt them by just <laughs> yeah. like shooting the shit out of them. They're easily bullied. Oh, and, um, yeah. actually, it was one of your replays that I had a look at the other day. It was one of your Isn't tournament me? games. No, Sotek. Oh, um, you were playing the Skaven, um, well, against the Skaven with the Lizardman, and the guy brought a Hell Pit Abomination, which got no work done because you just walked away from it constantly. It's all he had left at the end, and he just quit, because he's like, I'm never going to catch you. No point. Yeah. Um, it, it, help him on. It's too expensive, and you won't get the combat you want with it. It's too slow. Yeah. Well, and it, once again, it has no armor. Yeah. And skinks look at anything... I mean, region and tabletop meant you could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with skinks and actually handle them. The way region works in this game, no. <laughs> region is not enough to save you. So yeah, it's pretty rough, um, you know, because you want some, like, good, like, anti-large, right? But they're really good anti-large. Um, it's artillery. It's it's ranged units. That's what you got to bring. Uh, yeah, because I, your I think... large, like, your big anti-large... Well, I, I usually bring at least one unit of Storm Vermin as uh, Skaven. Oh yeah, the Storm Vermin uh, no, I, I think Storm Vermin are fantastic. I think Warp Lightning Cannons and Plague Claw Catapults are fantastic. Uh, play uh, Claw, I would not bring Plague Claw versus Lizardman. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, I would either. Uh, it wouldn't be my first pick, but I could see myself bringing it sometimes. I mean, it'd help yeah. against the Temple Guard. <laughs> yeah, but it, you're really not going to see Temple Guard against Skaven, I don't think. Probably not. Most of the time. I, I think Lizardman players would rather just go pure Saurus. Or even pure Skinks <laughs> with Javelins. Yeah, because I mean, what do you... What, <laughs> I'm what definitely do you trying even, that. It's like, what, dude, my, all, you ever, my all, all Skink builds are ludicrously fun to play and actually surprisingly terrifying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, dude, I used to go always Monsters and Skinks. It's very, I will it's say only now I've started bringing any Saurus uh, at all. Yeah, I will say um, Skaven are another faction that Croxagors perform surprisingly well against. The only thing that they'll go up against that they trade bad with, in my opinion, are Storm Vermin with uh, Halberds. Oh yeah, but I have been seeing uh, a pretty good amount of players lately. I don't know why, but I've been seeing players bringing Storm Vermin with swords and shields for some reason. That's that seems like a terrible idea. I know, yeah, it does. I've been seeing a lot of that. Like, almost every Skaven game I've had the last three days have had um, Storm Vermin with Shield and Sword. It's like, stop building that against Lizards. Yeah. Because Croxagors or any dinosaur will just be like, oh, there's an easy, like, 1,300 points that I can eat. <laughs> yeah, that seems really peculiar. So, guys, anyone watching this, don't don't bother doing that. That's a silly idea. Okay, bring any large. Uh, I think we covered all the big things. Like I said, they this game are, are probably going to have a couple rat ogres just to stop your large monsters from running through, and you know their key to victory is just bringing down that range. And can you overwhelm that range? Yeah. Oh, and uh, one thing actually, because they're ever so popular, just generally with Skaven is Doom Wheels. But of course, big dinosaurs are going to do very well against them. And if what you do with bring Coxigors in your front line, then your front line's basically immune to them. So they have no worth whatsoever. Yeah, I don't I don't think Doom Wheels are great against Lizardmen. Lizardmen have too many ways to deal with them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I'm just, I thought I'd mention that because people are always bringing Doom Wheels because they're funny. So, you know. Um, I guess we go into the sample build. Uh, I took it this one uh, with the lore of light, just because, like I said, a lot of these builds are about trying to teach you the roster than it is to be, you know, copy paste, go win games. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, but we have a bunch of skinks, uh, some skinks with javelins to throw at the uh, rat ogres. You have some uh, cold one riders with spears just to hunt any large creatures that might get through your lines. But the uh, you got the fire bolas that we talked about earlier. I did have the sample one because I got tired of writing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but because you have the Croxagors and the Bastildons in the middle, 
they're not going to punch through. And luckily, you do have the uh, the net of Amontok to kind of hold down any unit. And don't don't be afraid if you see that they don't really have any large. Don't be afraid to just cycle charge your cold one riders. Oh yeah, um, I mean they'll they'll just knock every slave on his back. You can just get rid of so much fodder uh, with yeah. them, and even clan rats just on the charge are going to get just melted. Especially if they're already engaged with your skinks or something. Just charging the back of them. They've broken. I guess we don't really need to talk about the list since we kind of hit everything. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go with it. Uh, I do like Mazda Mundi. I think he's a great choice. But I grabbed him for like the last two battles. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's shake, it, shake it up here. Yeah. Um, anything else before we jump on to Norska? <laughs> uh, no, let's go to Norska. Uh, Norska's not out so, yet, so uh, Empire, Norska. huh? Norska. Um, okay, any final notes about Norska? Uh, I think Norska is going to actually be really hard for Lizardman. Just I think as it will. a side note. Yeah, uh, I think of, that's actually going to be a super fun matchup. On lots the of slowing and anti large. It's going to be interesting. Dude, it's, it's going to be a wild time. Either, so it's, it's going to be cool. Dude, uh, anyway. dude sol anti Werekin solar engines all day, all day, <laughs> every day. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to tab out real quick. Uh, let me just check the Lizardman roster real quick. I believe soldiers do do fire damage. They do. They do do fire damage, yeah. yeah, yeah so I'm going like to tab back. Yeah. Maybe they'll uh, give Empire, us a fire yes. slon. Please. <laughs> Please, <laughs> fire slon. Oh, I want the salamanders. Uh, Can you imagine that? Oh, the salamanders are going to be right? great. Load of them oh, lined dude. up, belching fire, all the little cold folk. It's going to be great. I'll be, I'll be curious how they do the salamanders. Mm. Probably uh, Empire. Do just I, I don't have a, a sample build. Uh, I don't think I have a sample build for Vampire. I just didn't get to it in time. Uh, well, I think with Empire, it's again, it's slightly up in the air because of the patch. Um, yeah, Empire's got more changes than Bretonia. Yeah, they've got <laughs> a lot of extra like armor piercing and stuff, so it, it's um, going to be interesting, I think. Um, but I mean, we can go with the basics still. Yeah, I'm, it's I'm, definitely rough at the moment for Empire. I'm looking at the changes, and the only real big change that I think will make a difference uh, for this particular matchup is the Demigriff Knights have slightly smaller bonus versus large, but they have more hit points, so it kind of counteracts. But the Outriders have increased firing arc. So my, pers my personal thought, to win as Empire, you have to bring Outriders because the Dinos can just run through the front line so fast that they can get on top of your hand gunners. So if you're, if they have to stay mobile, so you as the Lisbon player, you have to have something that can stop the outriders and keep them at bay. Just like when we were talking with the dark elves. Yeah. Skinks, with the repeater, skinks, skinks. repeater crossbows. Skinks with javelins or chameleon skinks. That'll do the trick. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, that's, they do great. Big. Outriders suck in close combat. Chameleon skinks will do just fine. Yeah, great swords oh. will cut through your sources, though. That's true. Yep. But and, uh, uh, one big tactic um, for the Empire to deal with, like you know, just trying to just trying to stop the dinosaurs, so they can actually get value out of the hand gunners and cannons and stuff. Uh, Net of Amatog, always on a light wizard. Double skink, chief. It'll be dead in seconds. It'll get one net of Amantok off, and it's dead. I I honestly don't think the double skink chief is going to be as popular with the ammo reduction. Um, well, it'll still be able to kill those things pretty quick, and I don't know how much ammo it's got now. It's a pretty significant. It's a hundred. They have a hundred now. So they're going down to eighty-two. Then yeah, um, it's getting that's dropped still by huge. eighteen. Honestly, I, uh, I've never even close to running out of ammo on Skink Chiefs. Like, the oh, game I've run out of 10 ammo. minutes and you don't run out of I've ammo. run out of ammo plenty of games. Oh, yeah? You just find a character to sit on, go oh. run out of ammo sooner or later. Fair enough. But, Depends um, on how tight. Like, like, that's value, usually games like... against, like, Malekith or Morgur, or, you know, those mm. healing characters, though. Oh, yeah. Although, one thing, uh, the Empire will have cheaper mounts for their wizard, so they will be able to sort of play keep away a bit. Um, yeah. Also, Carl so Franz got. Carl Franz got some pretty big upgrades. I still think Boris would be more popular. Um, I think maybe so. Carl, maybe Carl. Maybe Carl Franz can finally smack dinosaurs with Gomorrahs. Oh, if only. Uh, I mean, he might. He might be good at that. Um, he he has definitely got a lot of buffs for his AP, so he he should be a lot more formidable. I mean, I want to see it. So, Gobbo. Oh, you are still um, here. Good. Yeah, I'm still here. I was worried you got lost again. <laughs> no, I, I get lost in my trance. I, I just don't think Empire has a lot of hope right now. <laughs> yeah. 
I think uh, this is another one revisit it after the patch because yeah, I mean they're going to shoot cannons at you. Uh, the vampire Definitely. counts. Uh, I'll go ahead and start. The vampire counts really got two options: terror guys and blood knights. <laughs> well, I don't think they really have anything else that can kind of stop that nonsense. Mm. Uh, the front line, you might see some grave guard. You'll see some fodder chase after your skinks. Um, I don't know your thoughts. Uh, well, one thing that I like is the vampire counts. Um which is a bit of a curveball, is um, sure there's like, you know, wind blast and stuff, but if you bring like like four units of Khan Wraiths, you can have them like all over the battlefield uh, surrounding different yeah, I monsters. Actually, I also, and they've got really I also, good AP. And it's and it's only really the spells that are going to get rid of them quickly. So yeah, I, they're pretty good. <laughs> I'm in the same boat. I really like Karen Wraiths. Uh, even hex race sometimes, usually Karen race though, and banshees. I I always have one banshee when oh, yeah. I fight lizardmen with vampire counts. Yeah, because the banshees they're going to shrug off the like AOE spells a lot better. So unless you bring like arcane unforging or something. Well, uh, Krakar... funny enough, I also like to use uh, I like to use corpse carts as bait <laughs> to try and lure the lizard. Krakar will last a banshee with the hand of the gods. I mean, if you can get up, if you can get really close to him and just keep on him, Krakar's hand of the gods does not work well at point blank range mm. at a, a human sized target. He it it doesn't fire when it's supposed to. Like you can gimp it if you get really up in his face, oh, yeah. or you know you can just eat the shot and then use invocation on the heck on her. It won't kill her usually. Mm. But yeah, I think, I think if you bring, like, one unit of Hex Wraiths, it'll get focused down by spells and killed. But I think if you actually bring more, um, you know, ethereal units than they're expecting, you'll actually do okay. Well, um, Lizardmen don't really actually have that many spells that are great for targeting spread out units or characters. Like, they have really good single focus abilities. I, th I think literally the opposite. Lores, because I mean, ruination of cities, banishment, uh, flock of doom, wind blast, right? Those yeah, are all, I think like... those are good against clusters. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm, you, I'm you just said the, the opposite. Are spread out. Oh, he's talking oh, about right, when they're, they're separated. Oh, okay. not, like, yeah, yeah. Together. I see. I see what you mean. I thought you meant like you like know, you don't have um, groups the of pendulum units than, or yeah. the burning head. Yeah, yeah. I see what you mean now. Um, yeah, Lizardmen don't I... have any wind spells. Um, Vampire Council is another faction. We, if you're bringing skinks, you got to keep them close at the beginning of the battle to your formation. Mm. And then once you see his setup, then spread out. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, because they're just going to... What am I trying to think? They can just run them down with hounds, wraiths, black knights. Oh, yeah. That's definitely a lot um, of scary things. More of high magic is always worthwhile, I think, because rarely do you not see the Red Duke or... Terror guys. Uh, uh, have either of y'all tested our fell bats or var guys against other against like lizard and pterodons? Are they? Fast I have enough tested fell bats versus a skink chief. The skink chief will win, but he'll lose half of his health, and he'll be wrapped up for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So without um, support, fell think... bats can give a lot of problems. I don't think what about var guys are cheap enough to. Oh, uh, var guys! I'm. Uh, I have not tested it, but I would be very surprised if var oh. guys did. Kill Although them. they are getting an AP buff, aren't they? Uh, yeah, but the problem is, is var guys um, with the skink chief, they can't. They can never catch him. They'll, they'll, yeah. they'll end up oh, no, but I'm, I'm thinking more as like another answer to dinosaurs. Right, oh, so I don't, basically, I don't know, because no. right now it's Terror Geist and Blood Knights, right? Uh, yeah, it's basically I, what you I, can do to throw at dinosaurs. But now if you've got Vargeist yeah, well, as well? Well, and the Vargolf is getting a complete rework as well. I, I, would, I would not feel comfortable until after I've played with the changes. Yeah. Because some yeah. of these changes, let me go look at them. I mean, this is some all these... speculation, really. Yeah, some um, of these changes like... Uh, okay, Vargeist. Or sorry, Vargo. 20 damage, 40 AP, attack interval... Uh, it, it plus 50 cost. It's hard for me to really look at it and definitively say this is how it's going to be. I hope the yeah. Vargolf is good now. It's such a cool looking unit, but I really man, like it's the not important well. The Vargolf is it's just fun. Yeah, I, I used to bring him a lot against dwarves, actually. Yeah, then the dwarves figured out how to shoot him to death instantly. Uh, well, yeah, now and it's, um, you know, um, the Thane gets nearby and it dies. 
You know, yep. torment a sword. And now um, just get shot. That's all I have to say about the vampire so. count match. Yeah, I, for the lizardmen, it's a pretty easy matchup. For vampire counts, you have to play very carefully. Yeah, yeah. vampire counts, you have to be really on top of your game. You have to be able to bait him into bad spots. You just got to be smart. Yeah. And they all just making edit changes while we're there. Uh, where's the oh, chaos? Yeah. I asked you to make a list, but you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was surprised by it. It's a very small list. Uh, I I pan. This is the last one I made. I panicked. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't think of anything. I mean, you've got the tools but, uh, in there, but yeah, the Warriors of Chaos versus Lizardmen. And like I said, I didn't have time to rewrite this because the other sections you can tell like where I had time. If we scroll up here to like Skaven, and it's like three paragraphs, four paragraphs. Oh yeah. This one I just hadn't gone back to. That's fine. It's a living written. document. Everyone knows that. At least they yeah. do now that I've said it just now. But yeah, I mean, it oh, says at the top so of the good. document, so. But yeah, Warriors of Chaos, it's kind of a kaiju battle, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, it, it usually ends up being like Krokgar and a Colt and a, and a Carnosaur versus, uh, what's his name? Kolek and a Shagoth. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, uh, what about your ogres. experiences? Um, I actually prefer bringing Dragon Ogres over Shagoths in this matchup, if, uh, you know, if I'm playing as Chaos, because I find the Dragon Ogres can surround a big dinosaur. Um, to stop it from running away, which I think is better than the Shagath. Shagath will do more damage, but um, yeah, I mean, stuff can run away and run through Temple Guard and things. But if you've got your Dragon Ogres, they won't be able to go anywhere a lot of the time. So um, you got to watch out for that, too. Uh, for me, this is actually the one matchup where I really like and feel I need to bring Temple Guard. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. most matchups, I'm not. I'm not super keen on them. Like I usually just take a lot of skinks and croc scores and shit. Mm -hmm. But against chaos, that that's almost always time for me to whip out like two units of temple guard. Like up by my, oh, yeah. my experience is, is just the way that the matches go. Is temple guard just can't exchange with chaos warriors with great weapons. So if you don't have something, I'm sorry, dinosaur to hit them, they're just they're just going to cut through your line. Uh, well, what I like there is. Uh... You either just whittle down the army on the approach with Flock of Doom, or you use Wind Blast to back up your Temple Guard. <laughs> that way you've always got something that you can like, run your dinosaurs back through if they're under uh, attack. Krokgar is also kind of a must-have against Chaos. Just because you can try taking one of the other lords, but you're 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 risking it if they take yeah. Kolek. Because yeah. if they bring Kolek, he will kill a Slon so fucking fast yeah. it's not even funny. And there's nothing you can do to stop him. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah, I mean, if they bring Laura Shadows, which they probably will, um, Kolek's going to land every hit. And if he uses um, Star Crusher, he's going to be doing like 800 damage a hit. It's just... Yeah, like... You well, Krokgar is... I think Krokgar is faster. Let me pan over like, here to you, you the Warhammer. You need and Krokgar needs the help of, like, Lore of Heavens or Lore of Beasts. Mm. Oh, that, I think that's why I suggested Lore of Heavens in there. Oh, yeah. Um, all right, so Lord of Heavens is like the good guy counter to Lord of Shadows right now. <laughs> uh, Kolek yeah, is 78 speed. Wind will help that frontline engagement, and in a army this tiny, that'll hit the entire battle. So that's Kolek good. is faster. Okay. Um, but Krokgar could shoot lasers. <laughs> that really <laughs> hurt. I mean, it's a close matchup, but I think Kolek has them. The only what? I think I think what the only reason Krokgar will win is if he gets off a hand of a good hand of the gods into Kolek, which just does. Well, he Kolek can also not Kolek. Krokgar can also get healing. Yeah. So I'm gonna tab yeah. back. Yeah, that's true. Because it's very rare that the two lords run out, fight each other solo until one of them dies. Like there's gonna be interference with other units. And yeah, I feel the, Krokgar the tends to here. have. Krokgar has much better support options than Kolek does. Definitely, yeah. Um, uh, although, I mean, those, you know, you get a load of Marauder Horsemen with throwing axes, like, you know, Yeah, but it's really hard to get throwing axes Krokgar, past Skinks. So. True, skinks, true. Skinks can mess up throwing axes pretty bad. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing. If, you, if you're in... If you find yourself in, a like, an engagement you shouldn't be in, then, you know, Krokgar will get pretty punished by it. But he's so slippery, you can run back through your lines and heal. So it's, I, I think it favors the Lizardmen in terms of like, you know, Lord dueling just for those heals. Oh yeah. I, I will say with Lizardmen though, I do, against Chaos, I do favor a build that's a mix of like Saurus and Dinosaurs. 
just because chaos tends to be in the predicament of if they bring enough if they bring enough halberds to overwhelm the dinosaurs efficiently then they're going to be too badly outnumbered by Saurus, who have really good stats, who will eventually beat them down alongside the dinosaurs. Oh yeah. But if they, but if they bring too many units, like uh, lower tier units, to trade better with the Saurus, then they're not going to have enough anti-large to deal with the uh, dinosaurs. So it's it's kind of a nasty situation for chaos at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I chaos, think is, tough chaos, chaos is getting some pretty notable buffs on like their chosen and stuff. So I don't know, we might see some stuff there. Yeah. But it seems to be a bit like big changes to their elite stuff. Generally, uh, so yeah, it's chosen got better. It's um, stuff that rock. costs a lot. Should be performing yeah. better, so it it doesn't mean you can go particularly wide, you know, if you're bringing these like new. But hey, the hell cannon is more accurate now. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, I, I like I, that I, change. I really like that. I think change. chaos is going to be incomplete till they get their regiments renowned, because as it stands, they're they're very one dimensional. Yeah, and even with the regiments for now, I'm still gonna feel like they don't they're incomplete until they get the uh, kind of god specific units. Mm. Although um, Archeon's gonna get pretty significant buffs to like AP, and if you've got the um, what what was his bodyguard unit called? The uh, Swords, Swords of Chaos. Chaos. Swords of Chaos. Yeah. So like with them nearby, giving him that bonus physical resist. Like I don't know how formidable. good it'll be versus. Against chaos uh, Lizardmen because Swords of Chaos are kind of anti-infantry cav. Um, well, yeah, but they yeah, but should do tough. well against. They, they are very tough, and they should do well against Silver Warriors and stuff like that. I think. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, I'm speculating here, but just that extra <laughs> physical resist, I reckon Archeon might be pretty scary. Yeah, well, hell, even Colette could really use that physical resistance when he fights up against Croc Guard. That would oh, help yeah. a lot. Yeah, with his little. You know, dragon. No, knowing um, knowing Colex luck, watch the Lizardman DLC is going to come out. There's going to be a fucking Guardian unit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. I'm sure there'll be something. Yeah, like um, I don't know, Crocky G's posse or something. <laughs> uh, you wanted to jump down to Lizardman? Actually, I didn't really think about this list. I'm probably going to change it because I don't really like it. Uh, you mean Wood Elves? Uh, yes, down the Wood Elves. Yeah. yeah. I hate this matchup. As I love it. <laughs> Um, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, it takes it takes a lot of effort, in my opinion. It takes a lot of effort as a Lisbon player because uh, I, I win it most of the time. It's just not fun for me to play. Oh, yeah. They, the Wood Elves are gonna have a lot of range. Usually, it's a lot of range and a lot of spears. And I think just don't just don't go dinosaurs. <laughs> you know, because a lot of a lot of Wood Elf players aren't gonna bring. They're gonna bring a lot of like Eternal Guard. And they bring that. Your Saurus Warriors will do fine, and just bring, you know, like if you don't, just don't give them what they want. I bring a lot of skinks and just like throw the little darts and just keep them near like Cold One Riders with spears, so like Sisters of Thorn or Wild Riders can't pick them off. Oh yeah. And if you keep your Revivification Crystal pretty far away from like the skinks, where like the main fighting is happening, they're going to be wasting all their ammunition on just fodder. Uh, I will you, say, Janet? fun fact for any Lizardman player out there, your Chameleon Skinks cannot be born in a melee fight. They will get destroyed in that fight. Oh, yeah, well, the Sisters of Thorn are, are fairly decent melee fighters. Yeah. And they're getting they more are models not, now. They are not a light cavalry unit. They are deceptive. Oh, yeah, for sure. They're like a medium cav. Yeah. I mean, they got that physical oh. resist, which sees them through. What about you, Janet? Um, I, I actually really like this idea. I really like this build. Um, I think that's a good approach because, yeah, just like Glade, um, Glade Guard with like Starfire Shafts, um, as long as they can keep them protected, they will just melt like one dinosaur after another. They can do serious damage. Um, and then when uh, you've got I mean, like a lot of spent stuff like Way Watchers, they do a ton of damage. It's, it's, there's a lot of scary things that you can do as the Wood Elves just to keep the um, Lizardman at arm's length and just do a ton of damage to expensive things, which is very scary for the Lizardman, I think. Yeah, I... I, like, even if they do decide to go, like, the War Dancer route, your Javelins and your Chameleon Skinks will do so much damage to them. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I do think you need some anti lars like Crocar, and I think I have them on Cold One, but Crocar does fine. You can, if you don't want to go with the Salon, and just having one group of Spears just to help out I think is always worthwhile. Oh yeah, yeah. I think uh, I mean, the cold, cold one nights there. That's 
that's definitely going to help you just plug up gaps. Like well, they're, they're, they're also actually, fast, so they can slaughter. run down things. Yeah. Yeah, Slawn are actually pretty good against Wood Elves with their 40% missile resist. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so and long as they're on the... a Palanquin. Hmm. If you, if you take Austin Mundy oh. on Zlack, he loses that missile resistance. Oh, yeah. And Wood Elves are losing. Let me slide over here to the patch update so everyone can see. The Wood Elves are losing. Do, 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 do. Glaive Guard. Where does it say? Somewhere here it says. Oh, here we go. Glade Guard. I have removed or magical attack. So taking the shield of the. Is it shield of the old ones? Uh, oh, is it yeah. as good? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Because that's a nice. That used to be a nice strategy, actually, for negating some of that range damage. Um, so that's interesting. But I think the matchup stays the same. You're going to have to have a pretty spread out formation, and you just have to keep throwing darts and. At the or the, the Wood Elf player, um, I have not seen a very rushy Wood Elf build yet. Doesn't mean it can't work. I just haven't encountered it. Yeah, yeah. Neither have I. Yeah, it seems to be focused on just outranging you. That tends to be the tactic, and then having you know Eternal Guard because they're the best at holding. That's about oh. it, really. Um, when I, I, when I play I Wood Elves, I tend to go Eternal Guard, Durthu, and um, Sister Thorn, because always. And uh, I do bring some Azrai Spears and some normal War Dancers. Not as many as I normally would, but the Azrai Spears are great for just getting on a big dinosaur. Uh, I, I'm surprised damage. you don't take Way Watchers. Those are pretty common. Way, Way Watchers, Watchers are pretty good. I think they're, they're too expensive. They, they can make mean? quick work of a verification crystal or something. Yeah, that's true. And they have the range to do it. Uh, but they're I find they're so really... expensive. You can bring like a couple of units of Glade Guard with Starfire Shafts. You'll get more damage out there, I think. Um, anything? Oh, yeah, uh, doing that way. I guess. White Watchers are getting a really big buff though in the patch. Yeah, they let are. me. But they're still very small unit sizes. I just think like you hit him with a couple of spells and they're done. Well, it's they. I mean, what else are if you're playing them right? It's a very like uh, bob and weave. You, you shoot, you move, you shoot, you move. You know, sniper tactics. Oh yeah. Um, but I guess that's it. Um, anything else? Any other matchups or anything? Thing before we make our closing comments. Um, hmm. Not really. I mean, so I think, tech. I think uh, it up for Lizardman. Any any big projects coming out for you? Any new videos coming out that people get excited about? Uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna have a lore video coming out very soon, and then Carrick Eight Peaks Week is coming up either ne this upcoming week or the week after that. So, that's well, what is this Carrick Eight, Eight Peaks, Peaks Week? Why why haven't we heard about this? Because it's not ready yet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not. I'm trying. I'm trying not to overhype it until it's ready yet. But well, you I'm shouldn't have there. mentioned it because if if you don't want hype, this is not the place to be. Well, it's it's almost done. This is hype uh, central. No, Carrick Eight Carrick Eight Peaks Week is going to be an entire week of nothing but lore focused on. It's going to be a lore video a day, Monday through Friday. That's going to cover all the different aspects of Carrick Eight Peaks and the people who fight there. I love it's a it. a lot of people. I love it. I'll be there. Fighting. <laughs> for the for the eight pigs. Um I'm a loony for I those eight pigs. I guess that's it. Uh I hope everyone enjoyed it. And uh I guess this is me signing off because I'm terrible at it. And Janet <laughs> You're better at it than me. Um okay. Well uh thanks thanks for joining us Sotek. It's been a pleasure. Uh everyone be sure to go check out his channel. Um, so uh, we've been uh, the Gobbo King and Janet, and this has been our podcast about the Lizardmen. Have a good day, guys. Bye.